Welcome to the second part of the introductory part of Enterprise Architecture module. As was promised in the beginning of the Enterprise Architecture introductory module, here we will speak about usefulness of Enterprise Architecture as well as some variations of Enterprise Architecture frameworks. So first of all, let us discuss why enterprise architecture is useful. As you saw in the previous part, enterprise architecture is represented with clear artifacts which shows what we know about the enterprise. And these artifacts are constructed so that we can see relationships between these artifacts as well as relationships between elements inside the artifacts. So one thing which we can achieve by this is transparency. And when we have this transparency and these graphical and other forms of representation of knowledge, it is easier to communicate knowledge about the enterprise, which is very important when we try to make specific decisions about strategies or about operational changes. A possibility to construct such artifacts also gives an opportunity to play with future designs of the enterprise before implementing them in, in reality. So we can say that enterprise architecture gives some robustness, gives flexibility and efficiency in enterprise management. And the first time when enterprise architecture as a term appeared was sort of 1984, when Zachman came up with information systems architecture. But it was so that by 21st century, actually, mainly, enterprise architecture was understood as IT architecture, even though Zachman looked at it more broadly. And only around the year 2000, also the business side of enterprise architecture got recognized and uh, people started to develop these models in, in more detail and with more enthusiasm. What to say about today? Today, enterprise architecture is well-established discipline. There are a lot of books about enterprise architectures. There are conferences going on and there are already certifications where you can get certific certificates as enterprise architects. When we speak about enterprise architectures, it is so that there are different other terms used and we will now just touch some of them. If we would like to consider all elements which belong to enterprise architecture, then we would get a very, very, very huge model which consists of many, many sub-models. Of course, not always all of them are needed and we don't have a capacity to look at all of them. Therefore, people sometimes consider only part of the models. For example, they might look only at the business level artifacts and then we can speak about perspective of business and business architecture or they can look at the specific type of the artifact and then we get for example data sub architecture but usually this sub is omitted and we say just data architecture similarly we can get process architecture and so on so when we speak about sub architectures we mainly refer to the specific type of the artifact. When we are speaking about perspectives, we usually think about some common uh, users of enterprise architecture. But there is one more possibility than maybe users from the group which does not belong to any of enterprise architecture framework prescribed common users of enterprise architecture. And then we can speak just about enterprise architecture view, which is any combination of artifacts which is useful for specific individual or specific group of individuals. One more um, term which is used in enterprise architecture, these are enterprise architecture levels. And one way how to speak about these levels is to introduce business level of enterprise architecture, which would correspond to business perspective of enterprise architecture. Application level, which could also correspond to application level perspective and technology level. I must admit that this application level sometimes is called information systems level, but this is from time to time. Uh, some people like to use application level. Some people like to use to say that it is information systems level. Uh, actually, information system may cross all these levels. So more correct would be to say application level. Also, there are not only Zachman's enterprise architecture framework. Zachman's framework was the first one, but today the most popular, popular one is um, 
as the Open Group Architecture Framework. Also, we well known such framework as DODAF, which is Department of Defense Architecture Framework, and also Federal Enterprise Architecture Framework. The last two, they are Ameri uh, in American developed frameworks. Here you can see them from the birth view. So here we can see our uh, Zachman's framework. Here we can see Togaf. Here we can see um, Dodaf. And here we can see Feaf. So you can see that these um, enterprise architecture frameworks are different, but if we look closer, we also will see a lot of similarities in these frameworks. It is important to know that these frameworks, when they were developed in the beginning, was be different with how they look today, and all frameworks are evolving. In your task, you will have an opportunity to follow how the Zachman's framework was evolving. It had changed in 1987, in 1992, in 1993, in 2001, in 2003, in 2004, in 2011, and currently it has trademark of Zachman's framework, and it also has new name. It is called Zachman Framework for Enterprise Architecture. It is also called Enterprise Ontology. In the link below, you can learn more about this framework. And uh, now we have reached the end of the second part of the introductory part of Enterprise Architecture module. You can now answer the questions for this part. And when it is done, upload the document in Moodle. Uh, in the next slide, you can see also some additional links where you can get additional information. And uh, actually, this is the end of the introductory part of the module. Thank you very much for the attention.